all thought I'd die fighting side by side with Renora Shipper. What about side by side with a friend? I. I could do that. So episode 2 of Ruby Volume 6 is out, and I've got some thoughts in the forms of pros and cons based on what we've seen so far, as well as some predictions and hopes for the rest of the season. I want to make this video brief, so I'll start with the cons first, then work my way to the pros. Spoilers for episodes 1 and 2 ahead, obviously. Cons. In just two episodes, it feels like most of the supporting cast were written out of the volume, and I don't think we'll be seeing most of them for a while. One major issue I have is how Sun was written out. I've been loving his role over the last two volumes, and I really do hope that he pulls a fucking Goodwill Hunting and goes to see about a girl, if you know what I mean. Anything that makes Bumblebee fans cry makes my day better. Another con would be some minor attention to detail issues that I've been having with the production quality. While it's light years ahead of how it used to be, model clipping and less than smooth animation and frame changes have been bugging me. There's this one scene where it does a small time skip with the artifact on screen in the same spot in both shots. And normally this is a great transition back to the current situation, but it felt very off. The music didn't really fit with the scene to give it the jarring change it needed with no fading, so a fade from past to present instead of just a jump cut would have been much, much better. Also, some very noticeable model clipping gave me pause. In episode one, Ruby does her little red petal flying thing, and it felt wrong to just be staring at an unfiltered red blob. They should have upped the speed or added a lot more blurring to it so it didn't feel so out of place. Finally, this fucking guy. His arm is outstretched as the train goes into the tunnel, and all we get is a bruise and scratches? His arm should be splattered on the cave wall. There's no way this guy's arm isn't shredded to all hell. He should be bleeding out on the floor of the train cabin. Seriously, this guy must be made of steel. I don't care how strong his aura is, the speed that train is traveling at is much faster than peak velocity of a human free-falling into a forest like in Volume 1. In Episode 2, I found myself skipping Cinder's little escapades in town. I had very little interest in what she wanted to talk about with the Spider Lady. Cinder is a character I'd rather know less about and have more show-don't-tell with. Following her and watching her talk to people seems like the opposite of what I want to sit through. I'd rather it be more ominous and less straightforward as to what she's trying to do. Brief glimpses into her travels and her past with as little dialogue as possible is what's really needed here for her character. Also, episode 2 seems to be like Bash Ozpin Day. Honestly, I get the whole feeling uneasy about him and having questions, but you are literally wasting two magic questions, we swear they aren't wishes guys, on something that I'm sure Ozpin was going to tell you with time. You literally wasted a celestial being's ability to answer any question about anything except the future, and you guys wasted it on knowledge someone in your party already has. Talk about a serious waste of resources here. Ruby is like the kid who throws a master ball at the first Pikachu she sees. These kinds of minor issues are problems with the show's been having since day one, and the crewby seriously need to step it up. Character motivation is the number one flaw, but hopefully the ending of episode 2 sets up for a much better exposition, even if it is being read to us instead of shown. Alright, now on to the pros. I like the overall tone shift from the last volume. It feels like we're no longer on a timer, but the team actually have some breathing room. Sure, they're being hunted by Grimm because of the artifact and they gotta walk now, but they're in much better place than before. Their enemy is disorganized, the evil maiden is on her own, and they've got a team waiting for them at their destination to help, and an ally in General Ironwood who can help them get to Atlas. We still know nothing of this little old lady except her name, but I'm sure she's going to be some form of plot crutch for convenient exposition. The animation is quite good, and the scene with Ozpin losing his cool in Episode 2 was a very nice touch of humanity for Ozpin, and honestly, probably one of the most human scenes in the entire show. This character, who up till now has been a gentle, professional teacher to the other characters, is now being pushed to his limits, stuck in a new body with a boy who still doesn't fully understand his new responsibilities, with a team of people who keep asking questions and ignoring his advice. And most of what he's worked towards and built over the last long while is on the brink of destruction. 
Seeing him snap the way he does reminds you that Ozpin is just a man, trying his best to do what's right for Remnant. Honestly, I gotta side with him too, as previously mentioned, the blatant misuse of the artifact is not okay on Team Ruby's part. The only character I felt that has really grown is Blake. White still seems a little too preppy for someone on the run, and although Ruby has matured a whole lot, isn't being the leader she needs to be right now. And Yang is, well, Yang is Yang. She's perfect, so I have nothing to say. But to be fair, these criticisms are stuff you can just say are human on their part as well. I mean, they are still teenage girls. What do you expect to happen over the course of, what, a year since they left Beacon? I just feel like the writers are trying to push Team Ruby into an escalated level of importance too quickly. They should have had one or two more volumes take place at Beacon Academy. But now we're stuck with these kids trying to save the world, and they just aren't ready. In Harry Potter, Harry had six years of being at Hogwarts before he and his friends left to go save the world. Ruby and her friends had, what, two years there? And a vital festival that went horribly wrong? And the challenges they faced in school were not that challenging compared to what they're facing now. If Raven didn't save their asses, Salem would have the artifact right now and they'd all be screwed. So the fact that they couldn't even defeat Cinder and her team as they were before makes me worried about how the hell they're going to handle Salem and her cronies now. And Salem is pissed too. Well, those are my thoughts so far. Hopefully the puking of exposition in the next episode will be quick and not take up the time of the entire episode. The series has the pacing of a Shonen Jump flagship with the episode count of a seasonal one-off, so hopefully they don't misuse the amount of time they have. If you enjoyed the video, check out my Why Ruby's a Great Show vid by clicking on the screen here. And we're almost at 5,000 subscribers, so make me a happy boy and help out with a sub. Until next time, my name's Geo, and this is the Fail Train Network.